Hi, I'm Giovanni Delfino, and we are at Cafecito Con by the Maryland Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and uh, we have a special guest today. We have uh, uh, Alex Nunes, is an executive from BGE, and we have Marco Avila, president and chairman of the Maryland Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Welcome. Well, I actually thank you for inviting us to, to your offices here. Well, you're very welcome, Giovanni. Thank you for coming, and thanks for your interest in uh, the Cafecito Con this morning. Great. No, thank you. Well, first of all, I just, I just want to say thank you for being a partner of the Merlin Spanish Chamber of Commerce. And, and um, I, I, I wanted to start by asking, how did you get into, into energy, first of all, and, and, and then to land me to uh, this position in BG? Well, that's a good question, Giovanni. Um, I didn't plan a career in energy. Um, I, I fell into it. I started, I went to law school, um, came back from law school, moved back home, was looking for a job. And my first job was with the General Assembly here in Maryland, the legislature, drafting legislation. And it was a six month contract. I didn't think it was going to lead to much. It was just a, a temporary uh, paycheck. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with the work. I fell in love with the impact that I could have on millions of Marylanders by solving problems proactively, which is different than a lot of the practice of law, which ends up being fixing problems in the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. I liked solving problems looking forward and having a big impact. I ended up staying with the legislature for five years and in the Senate Finance Committee where I served as counsel, uh, ended up becoming exposed to energy and utilities uh, as a policy area. And one thing led to another, and then I came in 2001 to work for the former holding company of BGE, Constellation Energy. So um, expected that to be a three to five year situation. That never happened. Uh, never happened. <laughs> it's been 20 more years. <laughs> yeah. um, but what energy did for me was similar to what the legislature did for me. It gave me the chance to have a big impact on the community, on the state, on the industry, uh, from a platform that was very strong, this company. And uh, I worked for Constellation uh, until Exelon acquired the company. And then I moved into BGE formally. So I've been with BGE since 2012 mm -hmm. and um, have enjoyed that work. We, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, coming into energy was a little bit of a scenic route. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't what I was thinking about. But as I now measure my values, I see that energy is a perfect place for me to invest my time in everything. And energy is everything. Energy, energy is everything. Correct. En energy is everything. Everything that we do involves energy, which is amazing to be in this kind of work. But tell us about Alex Nunes. Did you tell us about where did you grow up? Where do you come from, your roots? You know, we talked about earlier about your dad and all that. Tell us about Alex Nunes. Well, thanks for asking, Marco. <laughs> um, and the truth is, you know a little bit about it, but happy to share. Um, so I, I was born here, uh, grew up in Wheaton, Maryland, which for those who don't know is uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. Um, my father's from Ecuador. I think you know a little bit about Ecuador. Yeah. Um, I, he moved here when he was a young man at 18, uh, met a young American woman who uh, he married, and that's my mom. Yeah. So I, I've grown up with a foot in two worlds uh, from the very beginning. Uh, most of my parents' social circle was the Ecuadorian American community in Washington, D.C., so I grew up very close to that, but also, you know, grew up fully American. So I, I feel like I have a, a a foot in both worlds still to this day. Both worlds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, small family. I have one sister, yeah. um, and uh, we, we went away to school for college and law school. Um, came back to the D.C. area, and as I said, started working for the legislature. So that's I'm a lawyer by training, um, and. Uh, I'm moved by the opportunity to help others. Uh, my name, Alexander, means the helper of humanity or right. of people. Uh, and I, I don't know if that's what my parents intended when they named me, but it's become a guiding principle is that I, I want to ultimately help people through my work. 
It seems like uh, uh, your dad's uh, story is similar to mine because I came out when I was 17 and I married somebody from some kind of Pennsylvania. There you go. I have two kids. Absolutely. A boy and a girl. <laughs> it's very similar. Uh, it's very similar. And, and we've spoken. There's there are not that many Ecuadorian Americans uh, uh, known in the uh, central Maryland area, but in the D.C. area, there were a few, uh, a few more. And uh, it's it, it's a good story. It's a familiar story from for people from many countries, too. Yeah. I and, think. and I'm sure when you that came in, you had to work really hard. Obviously, we we'll learn the language and then that, that right? I think 17, 18 is a little harder than, than being, you know, really young. So I didn't. Yeah, my dad was, uh, my dad was 18 when he came and, and it was, it was difficult. And I, I don't think I fully appreciated that until I left the house and I saw what the working world was like. Yeah. And how, uh, you know, he he had an accent, so mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't hear the accent, right? Because you grew up with it. I didn't hear it at all. I didn't know my dad had an accent until an uh, accent until one of my friends asked me about <laughs> it. Like, what do you mean he doesn't have an accent? <laughs> um, but I I can see now where there were barriers that that uh, were very real for him. Right. And at the same time, he he was able to persevere and or, you know provide right. the support of family. And how was your experience uh, as someone who you know you didn't migrate to, to the U.S. you were born here, but how was your experience as a Latino also uh, growing in this, in this country and then being able to achieve this level of position you know, in, a, in a big company, big corporation in, in the U.S.? Giovanni, I, it's funny, I didn't grow up thinking mm-hmm. I was Latino. I didn't think I was anything. You, just, you are who you are, mm-hmm. and the labels come at you. Um, and so I, I, it, it, my identity as a Latino is something that has evolved. Mm-hmm. And so I, I believe I was rather fortunate. I had a lot of support from my family, um, colleagues and friends at school. Um, I, di- I didn't feel that I was on an unequal mm-hmm. playing field. Um, but as I have grown up and have accepted the labels that people have put at me uh, about being Hispanic or Latino, I realize there's an opportunity to alleviate barriers for others. And I think that's a really important thing for us to do. And, and it's not just for other Latinos. And we all have barriers uh, at some point. And it's up to us, I think, to both help identify those for people and then help them through them. Mm-hmm. So that's that's kind of how I think about what I do now as a Latino, as a Hispanic, is to try to support others um, through through their barriers. And we know that well because you are you've been very involved in in, in Maryland, for that matter, with, with with the minority you know world, the Hispanic business world. Um, we really thank you for being one big supporter of the, the Maryland Hispanic Chamber because you've always been there. And and, uh, and we can talk about a little bit about what do you do at BGE and, and all the initiatives that you have at BGE and what you've been, I mean, we see you so involved and, and busy on every way and we love it. And and I'm glad that we, we have this relationship to be able to help each other. Absolutely. Well, so tell us a little bit about what BGE is doing the sure. shirt and, 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 and what they think about doing, because I know you, have, you guys have big plans. <laughs> well, sure. First of all, there's nobody who's out and about more than you. So if, if you see me out and about, I'm just trying to catch up with you. <laughs> uh, and, and the work that you have done at the chamber is tremendous. So our support and sponsorship of the Maryland Hispanic Chamber comes from a place of understanding that you're having an impact and that you want to make positive change for the state, for the businesses in the state, for the communities in the state. And I see us doing that. I see that the chamber is growing. um, It's thriving. You're getting new businesses every day. But more importantly, I see the chamber as beginning to convene communities across the state. Uh, Smaller uh, chambers that uh, Latino and Hispanic chambers, but also other organizations. Um, and so I think the broader a platform we can build, the more impact we can have. And so mm-hmm. uh, I expect you'll have our support indefinitely because of that. But thank you. What, what does it mean to to you and to BG uh, in terms of your participation with with the chamber? Uh, what are the opportunities you see? 
There are many opportunities. I think one is to learn what businesses need, right? The chamber is ultimately a, a, a convocation of businesses and each business has its own needs, its own perspectives. As a utility that's delivering electricity and natural gas every day to all the homes and businesses in central Maryland, we have 1.3 million electric customers. We have 700,000 gas customers. We literally touch every home and every business. If we don't know what the business community needs, we're just gonna get lucky or not in how we serve them. So being close to the business is important just so that we can do it the best job possible in serving their needs. But again, it really goes to the platform. Um, by bringing people together, we attract attention to the business community, to the Hispanic business community, uh, to the needs of our communities. And as a company that's committed to making uh, a cleaner, brighter future for our customers and communities, uh, this is a powerful way to do that. So we see the chamber as a vehicle for many positive outcomes uh, that are aligned with our purpose. Uh, you asked a little bit about BGE. So um, I told you what we do, we deliver energy. Right. What makes us special and what makes the other utilities in our parent company, Axelon, special is that we do our work intentionally with an effort of driving equitable outcomes for our communities and for our customers. So it's not what we do that makes us terribly unique, it's how we do what we do. And it's really why I love being here 22 years after I started. So I was attracted here by the quality of the people, the opportunity for an impact. The company blessed me with the opportunity to grow and to try new things. But now what really drives my daily work is the opportunity to make a difference. Yeah. And so as we think about the role we have uh, in listening to customers, whether they're residential customers or business customers, industrial customers, as we think about the investments we make uh, for the state to achieve its uh, climate goals, for the resiliency, the affordability of, of energy delivery, we, we can be very careful. We can always update it to Dallas. Always update it to Dallas. Absolutely. But the one thing that I love that you guys do, and it's something that we um, value a lot because we are trying to do that, that as well, is working with the community, working with our future professionals, you know, the younger uh, uh, students, to give them an opportunity to learn about the energy sector. Yes. And put in place. Or, or maybe we should say feed the workforce development, right? Absolutely. So, so talk, talk, talk to uh, us about that. Sure. I mean, so the workforce in general in Maryland, it is dynamic, now, very strong. And at the same time, it's changing. And our workforce at BGB and, and, and my sister company, Pepco Holdings in, in Maryland, Pepco and Delmarva in Maryland, we realize we need to get the brightest and best talent possible for our future so that we can continue to deliver uh, what we do to our customers and communities. We need young people to be interested in STEM educations. We need young people to see energy and their local utility as an interesting place to work. And face it, I think a lot of what we do is taken for granted every day. People flip a switch, they turn on their stove, they turn on their furnace or their, their uh, heat pump. They don't really think much beyond the fact that it goes on and they're warm or they have light or they can cook. When you peel back just one or two layers though, you start understanding the complex machine that we operate, the, the large human network that our employees are, uh, create, uh, the opportunity we have to, again, make intentional differences in our communities. It's a really exciting place to work but you, you have to reach out and you have to ignite those young minds. So we have, we have STEM programs that start for middle, age, middle uh, school uh, aged kids. Uh, they come here and they spend a week uh, in rotations uh, with the company learning what we do and getting excited about the prospect of working at a company like ours. Mm -hmm. We also can then coach them about the importance of focusing on school, focusing on staying out of trouble, focusing on the long-term that they can create for themselves through diligence and, and their academics. Uh, then we touch the high schoolers. Uh, we bring them in as interns for the summer. And we really focus on serving 
young people, both who may want to go to college, but may see a path right out of college to work for us. Yeah. Um, we have a very vibrant college program. We have scholarships that we provide to support um, their education and their tuition payments. Uh, we have we, we have partnerships with all of our uh, local schools of higher education and, and a very special relationship with our HBCUs. So we're trying to make a positive difference by intentionally bringing people in at different parts in their academic career to see a future either with BGB or with another local business. And we're looking forward to the partnership we're doing with Engineers Week. It's, oh, that's going to be great. Engineers Week with the, uh, the Engineering Society of Baltimore. We've been doing it for 35 years or so. I took over five years ago. And we bring in Energy Day this coming February. And we're going to have probably about 1,500 students from Maryland learning about the wonderful world of engineering and STEM. And now we have Energy Energy uh, Day. And we partner with BGE. And um, we're going to have also the Department of Energy and, and uh, Maryland Energy Administration all together. And we're going to host all these kids that he are from me, right? Yeah, but we, I, we would love to host yeah. We would yeah. love to. Uh, there's going to be middle and high school kids that are going to be learning about um, energy and uh, chemistry. That's powerful. It, it, it is powerful. And, and it tends to remind you, too, about why we're doing what we're doing. Remember. Right? You spend so much of your career thinking about your own career, your team, the work, the goals. At some point, you start realizing the work that you're doing is shaping the future for our youth. Right. That, and we talked about it, 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 it is, it is. And, and, and you think about when you wake up in the day, in the morning and you go to work, you're gonna make decisions, you're gonna produce work, you're gonna influence others that are gonna change the workplaces and the environment, the business community for people we'll never meet. Yeah. And that's what's exciting. So getting to see those young faces and to ignite their interest in working in our industries and health uh, is a little bit of a glimpse yeah. to the future yeah. that we're trying to serve. One of the things that I've learned, you know, with doing Engineers Week is that you bring these, these students to learn these different industries in the engineering and STEM world, mm -hmm. but showing them the wow factor, showing them the final product so they can see, oh, I want to do that, you know, and, and get them excited about what they see I said, you know what? I want to be an engineer. I want to be in energy. I want to be in, you know, in aviation or the maritime world, whatever. But show them, you know, the final product and the wire factor is just that powerful. And w without even realizing, sometimes when we say something to someone, that could make a difference to that person and change the path for the better every day. And, then, and sometimes we realize we just do it, but. If we do more of that, is I mean, you got to make a difference to someone. Yeah. So I mean, you show you you show them that we care about their future. It helps them understand that they're going to have support all in the way. So that we talked about barriers a little bit before. Right. Everybody's going to have some barriers, but if they've got support, they've got a vision of what's possible. They're going to plow right through those barriers. Right. That's what's exciting. Right. Uh, you're you're both uh, what Ecuadorians in a way. You, you had a very ditch, yep. even though you were born here, you were born in Ecuador. Though you both not only good friends, uh, but also you became a great friend of the chamber for a long time. And now, what, as both of you, as, as leaders uh, in the Latino community, especially here in, in the state of Maryland, where, what do you think, or what would you suggest other um, Hispanics or Latinos? Uh, to do to, to get into these kind of positions or in whether it's a, in the corporate world, whether it's uh, growing, starting a business, whether it's um, getting into STEM, uh, like you mentioned before, uh, what, what do you tell them to, to, to uh, motivate them into, you know, breaking those barriers? I'd say I invest in good relationships. I think networks are really important. We, we can help one another through those networks. Um, it's one reason we're in the chamber, right? Uh, to, 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 to build new relationships with people. But um, I think the visibility of the Latino community could be higher. Mm -hmm. And building networks helps do that. Whether it's the chamber, whether it's individual leaders, um, 
I'm also um, uh, the co-founder of the Baltimore chapter of Alpha, uh, which is the uh, American Latino Professionals for America. It's a national group. These are all organizations that help raise the visibility of successful Latinos, which both inspires uh, young Latinos, uh, but also it pre presents notice to the broader community that we're here and that we can, we can do great work and that we're interested in collaborating uh, with everyone. So I think that's one thing I would encourage people to do is, is to focus on relationships that create visibility for yourself, but also for the community. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, I, I think you took the words out of my mouth because I always go, like yesterday when we had that event about bringing uh, the small businesses yes, to do business with bigger companies. And I was talking to some people that said, look, the first thing you need to do is build a relationship, build a trust, and then everything else will, will follow. Because if you come in out of the blue and say, I want to do business with you, people are going to say, what? I don't know you. But if you build a relationship and the trust, they will come and say, hey, let's do business together. I like you, you're doing woodwork and all that. The other thing is, you know, work hard. You got to work hard. One of the things I tell my kids is uh, be passionate about what you do then become an expert on what you do, and then give back to your industry, and also give back to society, humanity, charity, and, and you, you will have it all. I mean, one of the things that I, 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 us I usually share it, my, my slogan is like, the best gift you can give someone is the example of your own life. Yes. And then I think that's powerful, you know, and well, he, Hopefully it's a good thing, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, and that's the kind of thing you have to um, learn to be uh, an example. You know, and, and when you see people doing what you do or following or repeating what you've done, it's such a great feeling that said, oh, you know what? We must be doing something uh, good yeah. for bodies that they want to do what we do. So you kind of have to become an example if you can but it always be, you know, uh, transparent, honest, straightforward, you know, be a good person and make sure you make a difference in someone's, someone's life, you know. Like, yeah, and, and I think it's, I'll just build on that because I also think another opportunity for a leader is to uh, be very thoughtful about the choices that they make and how that can help build capacity and opportunity for others. So, um, one thing that, that we do at Exelon and here at BGE is really focus about where we spend our dollars. Uh, we have very comfortable relationships with vendors and con contractors and suppliers. But if we only do that and follow the status quo and f follow what we've always done, we're not creating new opportunities for people, is deliberately focus on diverse vendors, contractors, and suppliers. And uh, in about 10 years ago, I'm going to estimate we were at about 16% diverse supply. Um, in 2022, we closed the year at 42% here at BGE. That represents just under half a billion dollars of investment uh, with diverse owned businesses. More than half of those are Maryland businesses. That doesn't happen by accident. That happens because leadership uh, and, and specifically for us at the time, our CEO was Calvin Butler, who's now the CEO of Betzalon. He, he challenged us to do more and to be more thoughtful about the choices we made when we put uh, money out uh, on the street for our suppliers. What we have been able to do is grow what were small businesses into larger businesses, subcontractors that now can compete as prime contractors. And they do that not only for us, but they do it for WSP. They do it for other, for government. They can do it for other businesses in the area. So the thoughtfulness about the decisions we make as leaders can make such a powerful difference, not only in setting an example, but also building capacity for others. That's great. That's great, Dad. Thank you both uh, for giving us these this great messages also to, to the community out there. And anything else you would like to add before we close this interview? I, I, I think we should all keep gratitude mm -hmm. at the center of our hearts and minds as we do our jobs. Uh, 
Anybody who's in a leadership position is enjoying some form of privilege. And as we think about that privilege, we should be grateful for it. And then we can think about what we do with that uh, and how we can use it best to leave a legacy for the future and to help help the community today. Uh, I think that's very gratifying uh, for me. I, I try to do that myself. And it's really something I see in you, Marco. I, I see it in a lot of the leaders in the business community. And, and I, I just encourage those who might be listening uh, if they don't think about gratitude and, and their, their use of whatever privileges they have, um, I would encourage them to think about how they can make a difference in others' lives by doing that. All right. You, Mark? I just want to um, thank you for uh, being a good friend and a good supporter of the Chamber. I think together, you know, La Unión Nace La Fuerza, and, and, and um, the United, we can, we, we can be stronger and we can help others. And, and, and leave, uh, you know, the legacy that others can follow, you know, and I really appreciate our relationships. And, and I'm glad we have having un cafecito con Alex. Que hoy día. Gracias, señor. Te agradezco mucho por todo, Juan. Gracias, señor. And Giovanni, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. The, I appreciate the work of the chamber. I, I appreciate this forum. And um, let's go make a great difference for our community today. Absolutamente. Yes, absolutely. That's solid. That's solid. And thank you. Thank you for uh, following us. And also go to uh, our page in uh, MPHCC in YouTube. And you can follow us on, on all, all of the media channels, right? Yeah. We, uh, uh, the Maryland Spanish Chamber of Commerce is working really hard on, on uh, getting the word out there about everything that the Chamber is doing uh, so we can help more uh, Latinos and Hispanics in, in our state. So thank you very much. I'm Giovanni Delfino. Have a great day.